Welcome! In this video, I want to show you four different ways to solve this equation x plus 3 divided by 5 equals 7. So the first method is just going to be exactly how the problem is written and we will work through using inverse operations to go ahead and solve from here. But a lot of times I found when I'm teaching it using this method, students get confused. So I want to show you some alternative ways to think about this problem. In this problem, we have x plus 3 is divided by 5. Now, what this really means though is this 5 is dividing into the x as well as into the 3. So there's really distributive properties going on for division. So we have, we can also write this as x divided by 5 plus 3 divided by 5 equals negative 7. Now this idea of distributive property, a lot of times students just think of distributive property as multiplication. Well, we also know that anything that division problems can always be written as a multiplication problem. So if I have x plus 3 that's being divided by 5, that means I instead of dividing by 5, I can multiply by the reciprocal. So in this next method, I'm going to use parentheses to rewrite x plus 3 inside parentheses, and I'm going to change dividing by 5 to multiplying by the reciprocal. So it's the exact same method as what you can see over here, but instead of dividing by five, we're multiplying by one fifth. And then now you can also think about that distributive property. I'm gonna rewrite the fractional a little bit differently. Instead of writing it as x over five, I'm just gonna rewrite it as one fifth x plus three fifths equals negative seven. Now all these equations are what we call equivalent equations, but the process to go ahead and solve them sometimes is gonna be a little bit different. So that is why I just wanna kinda of show you some variations and therefore at the end, you can decide which way you like to think of the problem and how you would solve for it to be, or how you would go ahead and solve the problem. So now let's get into the solving. Now, if I have x plus three being divided by five, and I want to undo that, right? When we're solving for a variable, solving for a variable x, we're trying to isolate the variable x. We're trying to undo everything that's happening to this variable x. And we're also gonna wanna undo everything using the reverse order of operations. And it kind of gets confusing when we have this x plus three divided by five. The main idea here is if we wanna get rid of dividing by five, let's go ahead and multiply by five. Because if you multiply this left-hand side by five, those fives are going to divide to one. Well, again, remember whatever you do on the left-hand side, you have to do on the right-hand side. So therefore, we're gonna multiply by five on both sides. Those are now going to divide to one, and that's just gonna leave, with, leave us with an x plus three equals a negative 35. Now, I can see that my variable x is just being added by three, so I'll go ahead and subtract a three, and I get x equals negative 38. Now, in the next example, um, you could do the exact same thing. You could multiply by five. You see these little fractions here. Um, so a lot of times when we have an equation and the denominators, um, or we have multiple denominators, we want to a lot of times look at the LCD and say, all right, what is the common denominator of all of our fractions here? And you can see here the LCD in this case is five. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply everything times five. It's the same idea of multiplying five on both sides, but what we're doing is we're saying, I want to get rid of my common denominator, right? Because my common denominator is five, five, and one. So I'm going to multiply everything times five. Well, when doing that, five times X over five is just going to be X. Five times three over five is just going to be plus three. And therefore five times negative seven is equal to negative 35. And again, you can see we're going to get the exact same answer. Now, in this example, um, kind of running out of space, let me go and move these down a little bit. Or maybe I'll move these up. So in this next example, what we are looking at is now I have one fifth times x plus three. And another way we can kind of look at this is, you know, if I wanna undo multiplying by one fifth, I can go and simply just go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal. Right, and that's kind of exactly what I was doing here. You know, if I multiply by five over one. So think about whenever you want to un get rid of a fraction, you can think about like dividing by the fraction, but sometimes that gets confusing. So we can also just multiply by a five over one on both sides. And let's get this over here. There you go. So when I multiply by a five over one on both sides, ah, right out of my room. Let's see, that's going to be a five. Okay, so I multiply by five over one, that's just gonna leave me with an x plus three equals negative 35. And again, what do you know, guys? We get the exact same solution.
All right, so the last example is going to include some fractions. And I know this is probably the one that most people probably um, probably want to avoid the most, but you can see that by using these inverse operations, again, everything is gonna make, everything is gonna connect. So we could just isolate the X by subtracting a three-fifths on both sides. Now I know most people do not wanna subtract a negative seven minus three-fifths, but in reality, all you have to do is just get a common denominator. So that's gonna be a negative 35 over five minus three-fifths. Well, again, that's just gonna equal a negative 38-fifths. So we have a one-fifth X equals a negative 38-fifths. And again, kind of the same thing, like you could divide by one-fifth, right? My X is being multiplied by one-fifth, so you could divide by one-fifth if you wanted to, or you could also just multiply by the reciprocal because dividing by one-fifth is really the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, and therefore you get X equals negative 38. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, there is a very basic way and then also some different ways to think about solving the problem so you can understand um, when you get stuck, ways that these relationship between the X plus three divided by five um, has with your variable X, so therefore you can solve. I hope this video was helpful for you and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers.